What's up guys, Vaping with Caleb here. Uh, today we're not going to be doing a review per se. Um, we're going to be doing a look into some mechanical mods. I've had a few people that follow me ask uh, differences between mechanicals. Like series versus parallel, uh, hybrid versus 510. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of that today. Kind of give a breakdown on what makes mechanicals what they are. Um, for that, I want to cover a little bit of advocacy like always. Uh, we do have a new rally in DC coming up May 2nd. That will be, they're rallying for the PMTAs to get moved back or, or demolished. Um, there's still a lot going on. Um, you know, there's still a federal ban, HR 2339, that's going to Senate sometime here soon um, that will take away all flavors including menthol and even for the DIY guys that would mean you're gonna be paying over like two thousand dollars or something for a 120 mil of nicotine so everybody needs to be calling their state reps messaging the president get on Twitter message your reps um, Call the White House, message the White House, email them, do everything you can. Um, we've got to keep fighting this. We can't give up. Also, there are several statewide and, and local flavor bands going on. I know Hawaii was pushing for one. Um, there's several other states. So, get on Kasa.org or ParadigmDistro.com Check out the news pages. I'll have links to both in the description of this video um, Take a look at both of those you can see what's going on locally where you're at Also, there are some um, Australia I believes trying to do away with nicotine where they can't get nicotine shipped in anymore So if you're over on that side of the pond there's problems going on there too. Um, without much further though, let's go ahead. Uh, like I said, we're going to take a look at, at some of the difference in switches and um, what makes different mods the way they are. So, let's drop it on down. Alright guys, so here we see a few different mechanical mods. Um, where I want to start off at is actually if your batteries have any kind of rips, tears, anything, gouges in the wraps or anything, see how that one started to peel back, go ahead and either discard the battery or um, buy some, some re-wraps. You want all of your wraps to always be mint condition. I check mine anytime before I put them in any mod, and that's regulated or, or mechanical, either one. Um, battery safety is key on, on vaping altogether. So, where we're going to start with this is 510 versus a 510, or 510 versus hybrid. If you notice on this one, there is no top. What's going to make contact with your battery is actually your 510 thread coming out of your atomizer. And on these, you always want to make sure that there's a protruding 510 pin preferably with an insulator around it this keeps the battery from hard shorting um, this is going to be your hybrid like I said the RDA makes your contact this one actually has a manually adjustable contact inside of it um, the difference is the hybrids usually hit a little bit harder. This one actually has a solid, uh, solid silver contact inside, so it does not lose too much. It still hits pretty hard, but it's got a manually adjustable 510. And then you have like this type. Ah, if I can get on it that actually has a spring inside of it 
this one also has a spring loaded 510. So, now that we've got that, difference in switches. So, most of your switches on your, especially if they're older, a lot of the newer ones are going to what they call a constant contact. A lot of your older ones are going to be this style right here, where when you push the button, the contact comes up, makes contact with the battery. You do end up with small arcing on the battery and on the top of the the connector. Um, what they're going to now with a lot of them is what they call a constant contact switch. And if you look in here, whenever you push that button down, that makes contact with the side of the mod, the barrel. And this piece right here basically is constantly making contact with that battery. So whenever you push this, it completes the circuit with the side of the, the atomizer. What these do is you don't have the arc marks being created all over the top of the battery or bottom of the battery, whichever way you're using it in that specific mod. So you have less arcing. You still have arcing, but it's down here. It's on this part and on the inside of your barrel here. You can see right there, there's a little bit of arc mark. So constant contact is what a lot of them have been going to. Basically, you've got your little Delrin piece. Whenever you push that down, those sides are making contact with the barrel of the mod. So that's your difference between your constant contact and a regular five, a regular uh, contact. When you get into to non tube um, regular mech mods, you have something like this. You've got your positive contacts up in the top up there, and then you've got spring loaded contacts down here. And what there is basically is there is a metal bar in here that goes to the top that actually completes the circuit or well it goes up to the switch right here but there's a bar that runs inside here whenever you've got your lid closed with your batteries in the battery the negative is touching this this bar and then going up here whenever you hit the switch it's actually connecting the two circuits so then your positive and negative are making contact which is creating your your vape um, this one is a parallel box, which means it runs two batteries at 4.2 volts fully charged. And what that does is if you're running, say, two 2,000 mAh batteries that are rated for 20 amps, you're going to keep your 20 amp, or you're going to, yeah, double your mAh, double your amperage so you're going to be running 4.2 volts 4,000 mile 50 amp this is a series mechanical mod this one does have a MOSFET to protect from building too low but what you're going to do essentially is it's going to be 4.2 volts on each side so if you're running two 2500 amp milliamp hour batteries it's still going to be 2500 milliamps and it's still going to be 25 amp, uh, amps rating, but it's going to be running at 8.4 volts. So you're going to have to build a lot higher to be in safe uh, resistance. Um, series, I would I would suggest never running below a 0.4 unless you you know your batteries really well and you and you really know your ohms law and what your amps are going to be running at that. Um, there are people that run 0.25s, 0.3s, but I tell everybody at least to start off. Start off about a 0 0.4, 0 0.45 um, parallel. Once again, know your, your battery limitations. 
Um, you can build a little bit lower on these. You can build down to probably 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.14 safely to start off with. These you can run down, I mean, on the, the 21700 parallel mods, you could probably run down to a 0 0.05, 0 0.06. Um, but like I said, know your ohms law. Know what the amp rating is on the battery. Know what it's going to be pushing with the build that you're putting in it. And, and make sure and be using a, a good battery, not some cheap rewrap that you don't know what the hell it is. Um, on something like these, um, on an 18650, I wouldn't build below a 0 0.14, 0 0.15 because most of your 18650s are rated for a 20 amp max, and that's some of the better batteries um, there's one or two that are 25 amp or close to 30 amp but you're not going to get any battery life at all and you're you're pushing these little batteries pretty hard now on these larger 21700s like both these are um, samsung 30ts are rated for 35 amp continuous draw so you can build down to you know 0 0.12 0 0.11 and still be in that safe range but it's still all about knowing your ohms law and using battery safety while you're using the mods. Um, I can't push that enough. Don't go throwing just a, a low ass build on something and blow your face off. Um, always make sure and build also on either a, a regulated device or something like this to where it will it has safeties built in. It'll tell you what the ohms on the coils are before you go throwing it on a mechanical mod. And like I said, anything with a hybrid, make sure that it has a good protruding 510 pin. Um, you know, you want something. See, that's sticking out a good millimeter, a three quarter millimeter or so. So that's going to be completely safe on something like this. Also on mechanical mods, especially on hybrids, always put your atomizer on first. This one I'm going to run the battery down because there's more battery ventilation on the bottom than there is on the top. And then you adjust this one's battery rattle like so. I adjusted it a little bit too much. Once you put your battery in, make sure that it is that the fire button is releasing whenever you let off of it. Um, mechanicals, the the thing with mechanicals is they can be great um, for experienced users if you're comfortable with Ohm's Law if you know your battery safety you're you're making sure your wraps are not all jankety um, they can be a great thing I love my mechs I use mechs probably more than I use regulated but I always make sure and, and new coils I always build on a regulated or a, or a build deck and then also um, check your screws like you can tell there's two screws on the bottom every I'd say a couple days or a week just touch them with a screwdriver make sure they're still good and tight because they can actually loosen up and if they loosen up just a, a, a sixteenth of a turn it can actually change the ohms that it's reading on the, the atomizer so, like this one the other day actually gave a, a 0.2 reading on a mechanical, on a regulated mod, just because the, the negative screw post had backed off just a hair, and it wouldn't hardly fire on the mechanical. Guys, if, if you ever have a mechanical, for some reason, when you put a battery in it, it's not firing, take the battery out check everything check your wires check make sure you don't have anything arcing over 
Um, shorten the circuit out. Make sure all your posts are tight. Make sure your build deck screws are tight. Go through and check everything. Put the battery back in. Um, or even, you know, check it on a, on a regulated device again. Check and make sure that everything is working properly. And then put it back in and test it again. Also, if your contacts, like I showed you where the arc marks are, if those get too bad dirty you will have firing issues so you know if for some reason an atomizer works perfect and reads what it's supposed to on a regulated device but it won't fire worth the crap on your mech check your terminals um, boxes are not as bad You're not going to really have arc marks, but you may have where the copper down there gets uh, dirty. And you can actually take a pencil with a good eraser. Give them a light brushing. Blow it out of there. And then you should be good to go on that. So, that about covers uh, what I wanted to cover today. So, we'll take it back up on top, talk a little bit more, and then uh, we'll end this video. Alright guys, like I said, uh, we're not really doing a review of anything today. I just wanted to, to go through some of the mechanical safeties. Um, I know a lot of people are just getting into mechs and don't quite know the safeties on them. Um, never build beyond what you're comfortable with. Make sure and know your battery safety. Make sure that the build that you're putting in the RDA is safe for the battery that you're running. If a mechanical ever starts to get hot to where it hurts to touch the mod or the button, take the battery out immediately, let it cool down. Um, you can vent a battery that way. And usually that means you either have a short somewhere or the build is too low for the battery. Or C, the battery is is no good. Um, batteries, just about every five to six months, I would say, for me, I have to, to replace all my batteries. Um, make sure all your wraps, no nicks, no tears, no nothing. Some mods like this one do have um, insulators inside the mod to keep if, if it does have a small tear somewhere. And it also both these also have um, um, little Delrin caps, top and bottom. Or not Delrin, but I can't remember the damn word for the material. Um, anyway. Like I said, I hope everybody is safe when they use their mechs. Know your Ohm's Law. You can find things like Vape Tool Pro on Android um, that will actually tell you what ohms would be on so many reps, etc. And also it will tell you how many amps it will be pushing at a 4.2 volt. So on top of that you do have uh, Battery Mooch who rates batteries. Um, some of your better batteries are your Samsung, your LG, um, Sony. Depends on what, what size battery you're using and, and what you're using it for. He actually has charts that you can print off or save to your computer or download to your phone that actually show all the top rated cells at this time. Um, make sure you buy authentic batteries. I always recommend imrbatteries.com or 18650 battery store both of those are really good um, for authentic batteries but yeah guys that about covers it y'all have a wonderful weekend make sure and check out a uh, deep south vape show this sunday night 9 p.m